Guys, feast your eyes on one of, if not the rarest, British racing bike we've ever had in the museum here and on the, the benches at, at Kaplan Cycles. This is a Norton, John Player Norton 850cc. We got a phone call that this was available late on a Tuesday night uh, and I texted Billy Wednesday morning at like 7 a.m. I was like, Billy, there's a John Player Norton available. Shoot. Do you want to go grab it today? And you didn't have to second guess that, did you, Bill? No, one split second. It was like, yes. So I think three o'clock that day, Billy had it loaded up in the van and was on the way home. And it exceeded my expectations in originality. Um, it's a, it's a, what really blew my mind is a one owner bike. We bought it from the original owner. We bought this brand new. And Billy, tell us, tell us a little bit about this bike. I know we've done quite a bit to it since we got it too, but uh, start at the beginning with sure, it. Sure, sure. You touched on the fact that the, you know, it was a one owner bike. The guy that owned this bike actually owned a Norton Osa Kawasaki dealer outside of San Francisco around 1970 and uh, he himself owned this bike and rode it you know, some thousands of miles and then his nephew looked after it for decades afterwards took great care of it he, he pickled it but he made sure it ran he started it now and again so uh, when we got it when we pulled it in here we actually were able to start it after a couple of stabs so um, it, it's, it was videos a, online too of you starting it and they got a ton of views. Right, yeah, and it was really remarkable uh, that it started and ran as good as it did. You know, I was quite surprised, but again, it had been well cared for by the nephew. So, uh, but this motorcycle is one of 200 made, 120 came to America. Uh, you know, that, uh, aside from that, uh, it's got a lot of other remarkable things about it. Um, a guy named uh, Peter Williams was Norton's um, uh, engineer and he engineered a bike that actually won a race in the Isle of Man TT the 750 superbike race he um, let's see was it superbike the 750 formula 750 win at the 1973 Isle of Man TT this bike was fashioned after that to, to represent uh, what Norton's achievement was there at the TT it was remarkable a British engineer engineering a British bike to win at the TT is like over the top it's like the Red Sox winning at Fenway Park, winning the, uh, the, uh, the Grand Slam or whatever you call that. Anyhow, fantastic machine. Uh, it's basically an 850cc Norton twin, um, uh, Mark uh, three, Mark II 850 Commando, and um, with some minor modifications. Rear set pegs, clip-on handlebars, um, this beautiful fiberglass bodywork that fits over the ga steel gas tank, which is underneath. But Norton, uh, this is a very thirsty machine, so they increase the tank by a gallon. And, and you can see when you take the fiberglass off, underneath is uh, weld marks where the, the tank was actually modified at the factory, at the works. So, um, you know, they were trying to make something to replicate um, uh, their race bike, and they did a great job. One thing that uh, Norton did was they coupled with John Player uh, Tobacco Company. John Player and Sons were a big tobacco concern. And uh, they were one of the first ever to have uh, that type of advertising emblazoned on the sides of the bike. So this represents their very early efforts at advertising. Another thing is the twin headlights. Man, does that have a cool look. It's like, uh, it's like something out of Mad Max. You know, it's, it's really a one of a kind motorcycle. Nothing ever uh, before or since has been made to look like this. You know, that you cannot see the handlebars. That's another cool aspect of this fairing. You know, your hands are behind the windscreen the whole time. And uh, Norton actually foresaw uh, the need for disc brakes, so they were one of the first to put uh, real disc brakes uh, on um, a street bike. So that's a Lockheed, uh, Norton Lockheed disc and caliper, and um, very uh, unique at the time. And that was, called, that was considered quite the braking uh, apparatus back in the day but again it's a one piston you know single disc brake and very small in diameter but they were on to something they really were um you know this this motorcycle the styling is second to none it's uh, it's fantastic yeah so you know mentioning the avon fiberglass work this beautiful molded fiberglass it's a three-piece setup uh, it's the original gel coat. This has not been resprayed or repainted or doctored in any way. It's been polished and very carefully looked after. There, even the original sticker for the shift pattern is still in existence on top of the, the tank cover here, which is really cool. I mean, 
that that for that to last all these years is, is really remarkable. None of this stuff is remade. It's all even these fragile mirrors are stock original. It's fifty years old, though. It, yeah, it's fifty years old, and it's made in England. I mean, uh, you know, I don't know if they expected it. It would last all this time. You know, the tail section is beautiful. Uh, you know, and it, it's a big bread box on the back. There's a storage inside it, um, but that's original, unrestored, original graphics. I'm not sure about the flag on the top, but I don't think that matters. Um, yeah, there's a Norton flag on top. I think that someone put on uh, along the way, and that's uh, part of the bike's history. We have a world-class painter, but we didn't touch the, the, the finish at all because it's original gel coat, right, Bill? Exactly, and, and I, I would have freaked out if we painted over this original gel coat. I mean, it, it could look uh, better if it were restored, but I think it looks perfect the way it is because it's original, unmolested, unrestored. It's a time capsule. Yeah, it's a really a time capsule. One thing we did do is replace the windscreen with an exact replica of the original, or as close as possible to exact replica. So uh, that was cracked and you know broken over years. It outgassed and dried up, and you know we found a perfect, uh, in my opinion, perfect uh, replica. So, and, and the gauges and everything, Everything works, um, surprisingly, um, and uh, we, we did that. We do have a work order on this bike that shows that we did test everything, and, and whatever wasn't working, we made work. Um, you know, these rear set pegs are really cool. I mean, look, you know how far back your legs are, and, and so you're in a real racing crouch, and that's what they wanted to replicate with this. You know, it, it is basically a Norton 850 Commando, but it's made to be like a race bike, and the exhaust. Uh, original exhausts were black anodized and they had caps on the end and these are I believe Dunstall replicas of the originals but they're chrome in color we have the original black pipes that came with the bike but they were rusted badly enough that we decided and opted to leave these re uh, replacements on that came with the bike when we bought it they're actually on your desk aren't they they're yeah they're on my desk yeah we, yeah so we do have the original stock pipes and they are black I guess coated or anodized it's not painted it's it's like a black chrome almost yes black it's chrome is what they call that header. yep that's the actual original factory black header pipes we have the mufflers they're not rusted through anywhere are they the mufflers are rusted they, through they were, yeah i didn't note that Notice yep that. yeah they and that's why we left them aside because you know they were just too far gone um but we uh so during the uh, recommissioning of this bike you know it was a running riding bike when we first brought it here uh, remarkably started and, and ran quite well, uh, no, uh, no funny noises from the engine. And the seller told me that the, uh, the rubber bushings, the isoelastic uh, bushings that, are, that uh, isolate the engine from the chassis, he said they were worn out. And they weren't worn out at all. Thank thankfully, they weren't worn out. What was rattling was the windscreen. And so we, once we got that sorted, everything was nice and quiet. But we relied on uh, gentlemen by the name of Chris West, who uh, is uh, NortonCommando.com, is that his uh, website, Ken? Yes. Yeah, he uh, is a wealth of knowledge, uh, an American authority on the Norton Commando and the John Player Norton especially. He, uh, he came and verified that this is in fact, indeed, a, a John Player Norton and not a, um, a, a clone of, of some sort. He himself owns a clone that has a curly fairing on it, which looks a lot like this. So there are, there were companies out there making uh, replicas of this, this model, but this is the real deal. Matching numbers, there's a serial number under the seat on the chassis uh, that matches the engine number. So it is a matching numbers, original bike, unrestored. The engine's never been a part to my knowledge. You know, absolutely incredible. This is like you say, Ken, and I, I would say this is a fine example of a time capsule. You know, th there's some unusual parts that are on this bike and I've outlined it um, in the work order, but you know, here, uh, this little stub sh uh, handlebar here, this is a factory part. It looks kind of like an afterthought, but it's just to mount the choke. And, uh, but it is part of, the, part of the part scheme, the clip-on handlebars, this beautiful fairing, you know, all in the tank cover. Underneath this, this is not really the tank, it's just a, simply a cover that goes over the steel tank, which, like I said before, had been modified to accommodate an extra gallon of fuel. So, um, yeah, really remarkable condition. Ah, second to none, really. Um, when I was a kid, I was on my way to Daytona, and I was whipping down I-95, uh, 18 years old, driving the van. I saw twin headlights come, and I go, holy shit, it's a John Player Norton. Like, wow, and sure enough, wow, went flying by. Like, it made me, 
made me uh, gave me chills, and it gives me chills today thinking about all those years ago. And I saw this guy wearing black leathers and tall black leather boots, in, you know, and an open face helmet. And this is in the first of March, freezing cold, on that beautiful Norton. I never forgot it, and I was always a fan of this model. Uh, Jay Leno himself has one of these, and he did a program, a, a YouTube video, I believe, on, on his bike that he bought new. And uh, he was explaining that all his friends, they didn't have Farrah Fawcett posters on the wall or any, you know, girly stuff on the wall. They had John Player Norton posters on the wall in their shops. And I went, wait a minute. I thought I remembered in my shop I had one. And believe it or not, on my wall in my shop, I have the original ad from the magazine that has the John Player Norton. To this day. To this so. day, it's still on my wall in my shop later. 50 years later. Yeah, so I've always been a fan of this model because of its rarity and because of its significance and its meaningfulness you know, in the motorcycling world. It really is quite a machine. Um, you know, we've gone the extra mile with this here at Kaplan Cycles. We've uh, brought it back to life and, and got it back on its wheels. And, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it was never far from that, but it is now, you know, per perfectly running, starts beautifully, runs and idles. And uh, I, I would love to take it out and give it a good, a good run, but um, that's not gonna happen. That's gonna be for its next owner. It's still got the California license plate on it. Billy will do a riding demo though for you, so don't, don't sign off yet. <laughs> Which, yeah, well, that's good to know. Billy's gonna run this for us, and yeah, uh, I yeah. think uh, he's the right guy to, for the job, for sure. Yeah, yeah, knowing that uh, a bike like this uh, um, had won at the Isle of Man TT, uh, and that they replicated it with this, it's just, its pedigree is, is really remarkable. And Norton, um, it, it, if you didn't know it, Norton won the very first Isle of Man TT. Wow. Okay. And, in 1907 wow. and so they've been at it ever since and they're still making bikes that uh, that are uh, capable runners at the tt that's fantastic yeah it's yeah it's a benchmark for them to to do well at the tt so they've always always had a thing for that this is why we call billy the professor he's forgot more about the stuff than most of us know oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah well that's okay um yeah i've been studying this stuff for a long time and uh you know significant motorcycles have a place in my heart this is one of them you're you know. definitely the right guy to go pick it up, the right guy to uh, commandeer the resurrection of it. And uh, um, we got the right guy. We just got lucky having, you know what happened? We posted the video and Chris contacted us. Yeah. That's what happened That's with fantastic. the video of when you started it. And he's like, yeah. I, I run the NortonCommander.com website. I'm the importer of all the Norton parts. Right. And he's actually starting a John Player, what did he call it? It's a registry. Registry. Yeah. And, and, and he goes, I want to come and inspect it, make sure it's a real thing. Yeah. And he came down. He spent a good couple days here with yeah. you and Bill, Bill Kelly uh, right. going over this thing top to bottom. So, Chris, we're super grateful. If you want to have the ultimate Norton expert on the planet that I know, uh, go to NortonCommander.com. Give Chris a call. He knows. He, he actually is remanufacturing some of the parts that are replacement service parts, right, that can't be found. Indeed, yeah. And uh, he had a couple items on hand that we were wondering, where are we ever going to find these parts? And he's very close by. I actually went to his home. It's just a few miles from where I live. I cannot believe that, you know, a guy that's so deeply involved in Norton Motorcycles would be so nearby our museum and our workshops. So, uh, you know, uh, our good luck, as you said, you know, our good fortune. There's a five-page work order that uh, Billy has synergized down to a, a, a couple of a couple few pages here. But if you want to touch on some of the recommissioning things we had done, that would probably be, oh, we are going to run it, so stay tuned. Right. Right, yeah, um, well, we made sure everything was sorted and proper, the timing was good, and, you know, we took a look at the actuation of the valves. Um, it's got brand new K81 TT100 uh, Dunlop tires on. These are unobtainium. Both are 19 inch, I believe, um, and uh, really, really almost impossible to get. I don't know if they even make them anymore. So they're, the triangulated pattern of the day they have a like kind of a, a pokey, funny shape to them. They're not round. They're po they're they're a bit of a triangle. Where'd you get them, Bill? It, it came from uh, our friend Chris Chris West at um, at NortonCommando.com, and uh, he had them in stock, and he could foresee the need for these. And uh, you know, all the Nortons that ever came out of the factory had this kind of tire, uh, the the 850 Commandos of this period. So, yeah, yeah, that that's uh, a couple of the things. There, there's a whole litany of things, Ken, that you have on that list there that uh, were done to the bike. I don't have to, my glasses, but to it's get a 14 it properly sorted, so I can start reading it if you like. <laughs> yeah. Fourteen point bold, yeah, yeah. So, so there, there's literally pages and pages of service notes 
Bill Kelly, the gentleman who worked on this, I've been working with Bill Kelly since I was 17 years old, <laughs> on and off, uh, at New England Cycle Sales. I'm 59. He's, how old's Bill? 60. Well, yeah, he's, he's about 62. 62. Uh, he was a, uh, a uh, service guy at New England Cycle Sales, worked his way up and became the service manager of the local Harley Davidson shop for 17 years, then retired and came here. But um, he's been, he's a big fan of Norton's as is Bill. He works on most of our British bikes and uh, he's doing a couple Bonvilles right now and uh, Rickmans and some really cool stuff. But he had this on his bench for, for weeks. The work order is written up at a total of 60 hours labor. I'd be willing to best. We bet we talked about it for 60 hours on top of that too. But a lot of, uh, so it's a 60 hour work order here and there's literally pages and pages of notes. Uh, the one, two, three, four, five pages of notes and pages of receipts and invoices and everything else. Billy synergized it down, so if you like, Bill, I can touch, I can read up, read on what Billy had written up here. So it has a new UASA battery, um, service to battery cables, as new NGK spark plugs. They clean and set the ignition points. They set the ignition timing. They cleaned, lubricated, and tested the mechanical spark advance mechanism. The fuel tank was removed from the bike. It was flushed, drained, and inspected. And that, that's worth noting if it's not already obvious. This is a gel coat cover for a steel gas tank that was actually two Norton tanks that they kind of modified and welded together. Um, it looks like a factory race part because it is. Uh, the tank was treated with evapo rust. It's a preservation chemical that takes the rust off the metal. Uh, they removed and cleaned the original fuel pet cocks, put fresh VP94 non-ethanol fuel in it. The carburetors removed, disassembled, and cleaned. The engine oil was replaced, and the oil filter was replaced. The gearbox oil was replaced. The clutch was removed from the motorcycle and disassembled. The clutch plates were deglazed and checked for flatness. Then the clutch was reinstalled and adjusted. They lubed the clutch cable, started the bike up, ran it, checked the oil pump operation, and then the front of the bike, they replaced, they had the whole front end off the bike and they, or the forks off, and they, they replaced the front brake rotor rebuilt the front brake caliper, rebuilt the front brake master cylinder, and bled the brakes and put fresh Motul 660 fluid in it. Then they added the new Dunlop TT100 K81 360x19 front tire, and the new Dunlop TT100 K81 410x19 rear tire. I actually personally um, hot water steam clean power wash and, and vapor blasted the, the, the rear wheel and uh, rear hub assembly. Um, the Front and rear wheels were balanced. The uh, I also I also steam cleaned the, the entire bike when it was down at the detail shop and, and washed it uh, with, with with the Ronnie and the guys. So uh, when we had it down there, we took the we had Bill take the cowling off of it and we decreased and cleaned the entire engine and polished all the aluminum on it and made careful careful note not to polish anything so it looked didn't look original. We didn't over polish it. We just cleaned it and and um, polished it and put it with a uh, Pro 40 aluminum to protect the, the aluminum surfaces and clean any, um, I don't know, anything that might have gotten on there over the years. So. That's that's a very important uh, part of the, the reclamation of this bike is that we left it alone. We didn't over polish it, over restore it, over anything. We left, you know, as it should be, uh, just as it is. As, it's still a time capsule. Mm -hmm. it's, it's still telling a story. We didn't erase any of its history. No, we just did everything that you would need to to bring it to the Isle of Man and ride it again, right? Yeah, right on. <laughs> I'm so, up for that. So absolutely. So the, the 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 tires also have new tubes, of course. The front and rear wheels were balanced. It has new rear brake shoes. The rear brake drum was cleaned, and it has new rear wheel sprocket cushions. Pretty much all the parts, if I'm not mistaken, came from Chris, Chris. West at NortonCommando.com. Uh, it has a new Reynolds final drive chain. If you can show them that, Ronnie, that's the actual. Correct. <laughs> chain for this Th you know, that is a oem spec chain for this bike so we, we went the extra mile for that we could have put a did chain on or any other kind but we went with the british chain as it should be i believe all the turn signals and wiring uh for the turn signals were replaced also it had turn signals on when it came here well, i'm not sure what was wrong it, with it, it did there were a couple of them were shorter stocked and they were uh you're just not quite correct so uh, uh chris had them in stock and we these are not chinese clones these are no the these are lucas yeah they're lucas. the real deal yeah we made sure that uh you know nothing no funny business was going on there so the windshield is also brand new too and that had to be custom fitted and drilled am, am i correct that's correct yep yeah and there's yeah, all kinds had of a special drill bit for that we had a, yeah i had one in stock in, in my shop and so we brought it in and we were able to drill through without uh, cracking. There's a hundred different ways to crack one of those brand new windscreens. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's done properly. 
the original windscreen really wasn't in that bad of shape. It could have stayed on there, but we wanted to make this bike as close to, to original and nice as humanly possible. So that was one of the items we could change without changing the originality and, and make it look fresher and cleaner. Right. Um, the bike was test ridden multiple times by both Bills, Bill, Bill Kelly, the mechanic, and Bill Blythe, the professor, road racer. So um, they set the tire pressures, gave it a 100 point check over, and the mechanic's comment, Bill's comment after the test ride was starts very easily. And, and Bill Kelly is 62 years old, right? So um, some of these British bikes, if they're not tuned perfectly, can be difficult to start. Yeah. This one's not. It runs great. Yep. Um, like I mentioned, we had hot water pressure wash, steam clean, degreased, polished, but not over polished. All the aluminum, all the chrome, the wheels, the forks, the handlebars, etc. Buffed and polished the fuel tank. And uh, we use new coat, which is a polymer sealant that uh, once a year wax that sealant that we put on on pretty much all the vintage bikes. So we put a coat of new coat on it and uh, on all of the gel coat. And uh, I just love, I just, to me, this is like a timeless, uh, hmm. it's just a beautiful, beautiful motorcycle. And it's 50 years old today. I, I venture to guess if it looks this cool at 50 years old, it's only going to, you know, it's a timeless design like a Porsche 911. It's always going to be cool. So it's badass. Everybody who's seen it has, has been thoroughly impressed. And uh, if you want to ask us any questions, give us a call. If you, if you want to purchase it, we offer uh, shipping. Uh, we can arrange all the shipping. We do financing in, in-house here. My son, Kenny Jr., can hook you up with financing. And um, if you have any questions at all, give us a call, 860-454-7024. Billy, the professor will probably answer the phone when you call any him or my daughter or my son one of those three will answer the phone here so if you have any questions about it give him a call he's here monday through friday answer, answering the phones and ready to to help you in any way from monday through friday nine to five um anything they're leaving in the note or i don't know um not really other than the demo ride you got, the you demo got, ride is you coming up this long guys you, you got to hear this thing run so We'll have, and it's getting dark. Maybe we should send you. Hey, it'll be cool to see the headlights at night. Headlight, boom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me grab my hat. It's cold out. It's only about 50 degrees out, so I have my leather on. This pipe is freezing cold. And uh, we're going to show you what this John Player Norton sounds like in a cold start. Yeah. Hope hope she cooperates. You know, she's been been good up till today. Do you have the mic, Billy? Or yeah, I mic? yeah, I do. Okay. Got some... Headlights. Those headlights are sick. She's cold. I think we don't have any ignition. Iconic classic. I saw this thing coming down the road, man. One of a kind. It 
looks like four headlights, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Must be the high, high low beams. Yeah. Must be four bulbs. Sounds sick. And 50 cc's of Norton 850 commando power coming down the road. That is one badass machine. Wow, it, looks yeah. like, it looks like four headlights coming down. Yeah, road. cool, cool, man. It's awesome. Holy smokes. Because of the reflection, there's like bulbs on the bottom, but the, the reflection on the top, it looks like four headlights. What a wicked machine. It runs beautifully. Oh my God, it handles fantastic. I would love to get this out on the highway, Ken, really. This thing is just made to go. What's the top speed on it? Good Lord, I think it's 110 miles an hour. Which is amazing for uh, you know uh, an old British twin to go that fast. Maybe downhill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you won't right. give it a try, are you? <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll try it. Oh my God! Coming yeah. Down 84. Yeah, yeah. Over oh, oh, Tallinn, yeah. down over the, the hill. Yeah, fantastic. And the way this runs, it runs so beautifully. It sounds amazing. Right. It really does. And you know when I was kicking it to start it. It wasn't uh, the it wasn't the bike's fault. It was my fault. I had the key switch on the wrong position. Oh, so you had no ignition. Yeah, I had no ignition. Yeah, yeah. So once I got it in the right spot, it started on the first kick. So yeah, fantastic. It runs beautifully. Idles. We're gonna have, we're gonna have a word from Bill Kelly, the master technician who spun the wrenches on this too when he comes over. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I'd call this uh, in the British term properly sorted. Properly sorted. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What's this switch for here? I don't know. Oh, it makes a high beam. I mean, oh, look at that. I thought maybe it was a gamma ray or something. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Put <laughs> it on these... high beam. Put it back on high beam. It looks, it looks really bright. bright. Yeah. Wow. Fantastic. Yeah. There's Bill. Bill, come here. Yeah. This is the guy I was telling you about, Bill Kelly. Bill he worked with him in the suit shop in uh, 17, back in 82, 83. And uh, he's been spinning wrenches for almost 50 years. So. Bill, tell us a little bit of, of do you have any words uh, you'd like to add about this Norton? Well, it was a real pleasure to work on, and um, with Chris's help from uh, Fair's Fairs, you know, it just everything went smoothly. It's, it's a great bike, and uh, I was amazed how easily it starts up and all that after working on you know, a lot of Triumphs and BSAs. They weren't quite as quite as easy, but uh, this bike is is really something. Um, it runs good. It sounds good. It, it does everything really well. It's, it's, it's really easy to start when the ignition keys in ignition. We only had the lights on, so. Oh, okay. I didn't have it that way. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Usually first or second kick. It's been starting yeah, up. Another rip with the high beams on. All right. Wanted to ask him twice. I don't think. Is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, just take the mic and talk about it. If you want to talk about this bike at all. Okay, I don't know if Bill, did Bill go through the work order? Yeah, he yeah, he went over the five feet okay. work brakes. Order. Tires and chain. Or... Brakes, tires, chain, everything's been done. Yep, yep, okay. It's a really special bike. I mean, it's, it's virtually one of a kind. You're not going to find those on every street corner. Well, apparently only 120 were imported to the U.S. Yeah. And how many of those are left today? That's a good question, but it's, uh, like I said, it was nothing but a pleasure to work on. It was really, really smooth and just everything worked out well. Awesome. Yeah, again, Chris West, his company is called Fair Spares, yep. and they're right here in Connecticut, and their website is NortonCommando.com. Is that correct? Yep. He's an absolutely great source. He's he's had, what, a half a dozen of these himself, and, uh, you know, he's... Uh, he really knows them inside and out, and that uh, that helped me out quite a bit. Like I said, I'm more familiar with the Triumphs and the BSAs, but uh, they're cousins. Yeah. Sounds wicked breathing through the Dunstalls.
It doesn't even sound like it's breathing hard. It's just like effortlessly floating down the road. If you're not familiar with the channel, guys, this is the New England Motorcycle Museum, the home of the New England Motorcycle Museum and Kaplan Cycles. Both floors of that football field long factory, which was built in 1814. We spent uh, oh, 100 man years labor, 25 guys, four years restoring that. And it's full of classic motorcycles like this Norton. Love the high beams, man. What a machine. Statements. Well, all I can say is bloody hell, mate. It's a ma magnificent machine. Uh, you know, fantastic. The uh, the inevitable, or what is this? The indestructible Norton, I think that's what they call it. Fantastic. Can't beat it. I would love to have this bike for myself, Ken. Me too. If any of you guys buy this bike and you want to leave it on display in the museum and become one of the museum benefactors, uh, you can leave it here as long as you like. We'd be honored to keep it. And I'd uh, be safe and high and dry in the museum here with all the other classic bikes. But uh, we can also ship it anywhere in the country for you. We just don't have the funding to buy it ourselves and keep it here, otherwise we would. But uh, thank you for watching. And uh, long live the king now, I guess yeah, it is, right? Long live the king, that's right. God bless America.